All right, let's go crude oil. <clears throat> All right. We have a new indicator coming out uh, with the supply and demand zones. These levels right now are in red, okay? So they're on this time frame. Yesterday, we had some big moves up yesterday. I'll go over that in a second. But today went from zone to zone. These levels will be given, can be given 24 hours earlier. So this is a leading indicator. This is not lagging. This works on all time frames. These are supply demand zones. So in other words, they show where the accumulation distribution was the previous days. And what that creates, it creates opportunity for us traders to get long or short with overall trend direction. So when we trade the system, we want to do a couple things. We want to look for the first thing is look for trend. I want to find out where the trend of the market is. Are we trading up? Or are we trading down? There's a few things how we can a few things we do to categorize the trend. The trend is going to be based upon my moving averages, which are lagging. Moving averages are lagging, but they're great for trend direction and my trend boxes. If my trend boxes are red, we're in a downtrend. I have trend filters built into these already. If my trend boxes are green, we're in an uptrend. So if the moving averages, I have two and one here, and it's a very simple moving averages here, but if my white's below my magenta, we're in a downtrend, and if my white is above my magenta, then I'm in an uptrend. If I'm angled, then I'm in a hard downtrend, and if I'm flat like this, then I'm not in a trend at all. That is a flat market. This is a trending market. So we've got to find the trend. That's the first thing we can do. The markets can only do two things. They can A, they can trend, or B, they go sideways. Very simple, not hard to understand. Secondly, we want to find the level. I have an indicator coming out that I just developed for all you traders. That's what these red lines are. You can change them to any color. And their price marker is going to be over to your right. In fact, I'll have it done before uh, this Friday, and I'll show you at the room what it's going to look like, and we'll get this out to you. Two is going to find the level. You're, you can change the color, the width of these lines, and you can also put the level, the exact number what the level is at to the right. I'll show you what it looks like in one second when I'm done with this. So we want to see what the levels are. Let's see where the accumulation distribution was a prior day because that's going to tell us where these gaps in the market are. These are gaps in the market where I got no support, no resistance. So this last trade, this last gap was from 24.35, almost stopped to the tick on my demand line, down to 23. So I got a $1,300 a $1,300 per one contract, and my maximum risk is 15 ticks on crude with my five sim entry. So I got a potential from uh, demand line to demand line, because once the demand line is broke, it becomes a supply line. I got potential of a 12 to 13 to one reward to risk trade from this level to this level. So that's levels. Here's my next level. My next level, and these are given 24 hours prior. These are leading indicators. This is 24, what, 35, 24, 46. So I got around 1,100 reward to risk there. So these are reward to risk levels. You have right around a 12 to 1 here, risking $150 maximum loss. And we'll just go, it's almost a 13 one. We'll go 12 to 1 here, just about. So you got a 12 to 1, a 12 to 1 based upon the gap in the market. All right, so that's where we got to find the levels. Now, the indicator that I'm going to show you is right here. It's actually working this morning. And what we're going to do is you want to look for break retest trades of these levels. So you're going to see these levels break, retest, go to the next level. Break, retest, go to the next level. So we're going to look for these levels and try to get level to level, level to level. Okay? And we'll go over that uh, 
in a second, but let me finish what we're doing here. You can change it any color you want. So you can see my supply line called the high this morning, around 4.30 this morning. My demand line just called low almost to the tick. So these are very important levels, and what we try to trade is level to level. Okay? Hey, good morning, Michael. So number one, we want to find the trend. The trend are these my moving averages, which are worthless by nature, but they're great for trend direction. The color of the trend box. If it's red, it's in a downtrend. Green, it's in an uptrend. Then I want to find the, the level. The level. Where are my supply demand lines? Where was the accumulation the day before? I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about where were they yesterday projecting into today. And these are these levels projected from yesterday. So once we know the level, then I can look for what? Speed in the market. Now I want to see speed. I want to see some speed boxes come in the market. Speed is categorized by my trend boxes. So I know my trend is down. Now I want to see speed. I want to see if the all these algorithms out there, all these high-frequency traders, hedge funds, prop firms, banks, I want to see if they're trying to mark the market up or mark the market down. And I want to be, I want to participate in speed. Because speed's going to let me know if I got power behind my trade. So speed boxes are categorized by this. If my trend boxes are red and my moving averages are down, I'm going to look for what? Speed in the market to go from level to level to get this 12 to 1 uh, potential reward to risk, this trade right here. So how can I do that? When these boxes close, these trend boxes close, we're coming off this M top up here. I want to see what? I want to see a one candle maximum two candle close inside of a closed trend box. Let me go that again. So I'm coming through this level to try to get a 12 to 1 reward to risk ratio potential. I want to see two or less candle close inside of a trend box. That's two candles. One, two. I don't consider the ones that straddle the line a candle. That's a straddle. I want to see it all by itself, a two-candle speed close. That lets me know I've got major sellers coming in the market. There's a major order imbalance at a demand line. Old demand lines become new supply lines, vice versa. So I want to try to get short right here on this little hiccup or retracement, which my 5 sim called the exact high to the exact bar. I'll show you how to enter. Vice versa up here. This is a beautiful one coming off of M top. Great trade right here. One candle close. That's the best you're going to get. That means a major speed in the market. My five sim got on this trade also for a nice little move down. And then my five sim got the M top up here also. But you want to see speed, in other words, come in the market at these supply demand lines to show what? That we're breaking through them. And we're trying to get the next level. So my next level, I want to see what? I want to see us get through 2302, and I'll get down to 2244. So I got a what? I got a six or five to six to one reward to risk ratio at this level. So I got around a five to one reward to risk ratio from here to here. My next level down, I got a huge reward to risk. Holy smoke. Check this out. Look at my reward to risk. We're talking 22.50. That's a 220. So almost a 22 to 1 reward to risk. That's potential. 21 to 1 reward to risk. This is a 5 to 1 if you want to trade that level. So when I look for these levels, I want to see what kind of reward I can risk for my stop. Because we enter off a five semi or smaller time frame. That's how I trade these levels. Okay? From one level to the next level. What's my reward to risk? So that's the ones coming up. All right, so we know we got this then. We know we got the trend down. We got the levels. We know reward to risk. We know we want to see speed get through these levels. 
Now we got to get what? We got to look for a entry. So we want to look for a full retracement off a smaller time frame. I put the levels on a nine sim Renko for my trend. This is a larger Renko bar. If you just trade off the nine sim Renko, your average stop's going to be around 22 ticks. Way too high. No one wants to risk 220 bucks. I mean, uh, not 220. No one wants to risk a 22 tick stop, right? Which is way too high. 220 to $203 per trade setup. We want a maximum 150 on oil, period. Number four, then, would be we want to look for a full retracement on a smaller time frame. Full retracement entry. So if we don't want to have large stops, we have smaller stops, we need to check down to our smaller time frame. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it to the exact bar. So we got this. This is the order of importance. This is how we'll do it all year this year, all next year, all the previous. I mean, these are electronically traded markets, guys. The cool thing about these levels, this is the footprint of the market. It's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. Our opinions are worthless. Don't think. Execute levels. Levels are created with accumulation distribution. It's created with order flow. It's the footprint of the market. That has nothing to do with me and you. It's actually money's coming in and out of the market creating these levels on the previous days. That's called supply demand. So full retracement. So let's mark this level down. Mark it uh, 2434. So we got this level right here on the 9 sim Renko, right? We're going down. We got a 12 to 1 potential reward to risk. How do we enter that? How do we enter this on this break of this 2434? How do we enter that? We want to use our 5 sim Renko. So let's put 2434. And you can put these over top of your 5 sim Renkos, guys. Off your, uh, I suggest I actually ed educate you guys and put these over top of your smaller time frame so you see them when you get them on your own charts because you get this indicator put on your own chart. Just put it over top of your smaller time frames. So there's your level, right? So what I want to do is I want to cut through this level. I know my trend's down. My trend box is down on my larger time frame. I got a speed bar that came in right here off my larger time frame. Two candle close. I want to cut through for an ABC short or what's called a one, two, three pattern short, ABC short, call anything you want it. J hook pattern, ABC, one, two, three. I call it ABC, but you can call it whatever you want. Actually, I learned the one, two, three pattern trading corn and soybeans back in the early 90s. So we called it one, two, three, but hell, I'm older now, 50 years old. So everybody calls it ABC now. So when I first learned how to do this, though, it was as a young trader, we called them one, two, three patterns. But anyway, so you cut through, you look for the retracement, we look for a continuation. All right, how do we enter then? What I want to do is I want to look for this pattern, ABC pattern. Here's your A. Here's your B. Here's your C. So I'm looking for a C pattern short. How do we do it? I want to cut through this sub uh, demand line, and I want to look for my oscillator below to look me for a full retracement. I want that to be a full retracement. Oh boy, hold on. I want to get above 90%. I have an oscillator at 90% up here, uh, down here, and an oscillator down here at 10%. Oscillators to me are absolutely worthless by themselves. You'll get just drilled in the market. You can't rely on divergence especially if you counter trend trade the market. You can't rely on moving averages. You can't rely on oscillators because they're absolutely worthless. They're great for timing entry, though. Okay? So we'll go over that in a sec, Tim. So what we want to do, once we cut through a supplier demand line, I want to look for a full retracement, get above 90%. Then I want to look for right there. I want to look for a red closing bar which will be negative market delta right there that exact bar is your exact entry to go short exactly to the exact bar after it closes right there your stop loss is always two ticks above the swing high so your hard stop going in on oil is a maximum $150 loss 
But we want to bring that stop down if you do chart trade or whatever you do, bring it down to two ticks above that swing. So whatever that swing is, let's take a look at it. That swing high at that close of that bar is 23. I want to have a 25 stop. So my stop has to be at exactly 25. twenty five right there so my stop is at twenty five that's my stop now your entry will be the open of this bar which will actually be the low of this bar so the low of that bar the highest twenty four twenty three so we got twenty four twenty five stop the low of that bar in a live trade, your fill will be the low of that bar is 24.09. So that's where you should get filled on a live trade, give or take one tick or so. It's always the low of the previous bar. We, we don't get the open because of slippage. So 24.09 and 25 is what? 25. That is your stop, your new stop right there. Okay, based upon the five cent. Two ticks above the swing high. So sometimes your stock can be lower. It can be 11, 12 ticks, depending on the market. But 15 tick maximum stock. All right, so once we get that in, I'm, I'm sorry, 15 tick stop going in and then adjust it two ticks above the swing high, swing low. We want to give it room two ticks above the swing higher swing low but 15 ticks going in because we don't want you to risk more than 15 ticks first going in and then adjust it two ticks above the swing high so what we want to do then is we want to look to go zone to zone we're trying to go zone to zone I'm trying to go from this level down to the next level which would be here. So your target is trend, level, speed, full retracement, zone to zone. That's your overall target. So you can scale, scale after entry. Target is zone to zone. And that's how we trade the markets. Trend, level, speed, full retracement, scale after zone to zone. Two ticks above the swing high to let the trade breathe. Maximum 15 tick going in. Adjust it two ticks after you pull the trigger. Okay, so what's our next level? Our next level is here at 23.04. So we're going to put 23.04 over here. And like I said, you can put these on your own. With the indicator I got coming out to you guys. I'm sorry, they'll automatically plot, so you put them on any time frame. So right there is our, our, our now our supply zone. Our supply zone's 2304. We had a five to one reward to risk ratio on the retracement on this. The next level is 2246. So our target on this trade is all the way down here. Like I said, you get this indicator on your own computer. It works on all markets. They'll plot this automatically for you. And our target after we break that is all the way down. Look at this uh, reward to risk. It's 2040. And that 2040 is a huge number, by the way. I don't go over huge numbers. That's a 21 to reward to risk coming up. 2040. Write that number down. That could be a big bouncer right there. Big bouncer. So 
minus one. I need 40. So there's your levels for the day, guys. These levels were given 24 hours prior based upon accumulation distribution. And they are just cranking it today. All right? So that's what we're looking at. Now, remember your zone, so that's how we trade it. Yesterday, let me show you before Gerald shuts this off. We had a lot of zone-to-zone -zone trades yesterday, too. It's the same thing on the upside. That's what the upside looks like. The upside just it just is the opposite. I want to I, trend is up and I'm green, right? I'm red today, but it's, it's the opposite. Look, look at this. I mean, I you can't make this stuff up. All right, this is price action. It's just an unbelievable trade yesterday. I got a one candle close. Trend is up. Moving average is up. You got trend box up. What's my number three characteristic? Speed. One candle close. There's my one candle close speed coming through my uh, supply line. I get a full retracement on my five sim right at the low of this level. And there's my exact entry yesterday. And that was from 2302 to 2435. You had almost a 12 to 13 to 1 reward to risk. That's another 12 to 1 reward to risk yesterday, just like today. As a 12 to 1, look at that. That's what a buy side looks like. Today, <coughs> here it is. We had a 12 to 1 potential here, zone to zone. Another 12 to 1 zone to zone. We're working on a 5 to 1 right now potential. It won't be a 5 to 1 because it didn't re retrace back to exactly 2305, but we're looking for a retracement right now. And then the target is down here at uh, 2245. So we're looking for an entry right now as we speak on the 5 Simrico. You do that with all time frames. 